Okay, good morning, everyone. We're just going to wait a few moments for people to trickle in here. We're joined this morning by Canucks General Manager Jim Benning. Jim, thanks for your time this morning. We'll take our first question here from Thomas Drance with The Athletic. Thomas, go ahead. Jim, good morning. Hey, Thomas. Uh, you mentioned on the radio just a moment ago that you would match any offer sheet that Elias Pettersson were to sign, and I just want to follow up on that. Um, yeah. How how important is it from your point of view to avoid that eventuality entirely, uh, perhaps by getting the deal done before 20, uh, the 28th, just in order to protect your cap structure? Um, I, I, you know, I don't comment on contract negotiations. That's our philosophy here. Um, but I would say, you know, we've had some, some real good talks here lately and, you know, we'd like to try to get it done sooner rather than later, but I can't say it'll be done by the 28th. We'll continue to, you know, talk to, you know, his representatives. And when we get to a deal, you guys will be the first to hear about it. And sorry, I missed the format. I'm not sure if I get a follow-up or not, but I'm just going to shoot. Um, what can you tell us and fans about how amateur scouting operations were impacted this season by cancellations, travel restrictions, travel budget issues, and on and on. Um, how closely did you work with Todd on that? Well, it was, it was a real difficult year for our scouts because of, you know, the leagues, you know, not playing and then they'd start up and then they get shut down. It was hard to travel across the border. Um, you know, so it was a difficult year to 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 scout that way Todd and his group did an excellent job um, you know he's he's got real good communication skills and you know they had zoom calls every couple of weeks they they watched a lot of video uh, whenever they could get out to games in the areas when the league started up they got out there and laid eyes on the players so I, I think you know we're as prepared as ever for the draft and you know we're expecting you know, to, to pick some good players in this year's draft. Sorry, Thomas, we will indeed take follow-ups. We'll go next to Patrick Johnston, Post Media. Hey, Jim, um, it's just on the radio again. You, you mentioned how you, there's a lot of interest in Nate Schmidt. Um, you know, he's a guy that obviously you guys picked up before the season. Um, you know, whether he's asked for trade or not is sort of irrelevant, I guess, at this point. What's changed in his scenario? Why is he suddenly somebody that you're even entertaining a trade for? Well, it, it just seems like for whatever reason, there's a lot of interest in him with other teams. So, you know, we're not necessarily, we didn't put his name out there. Teams have, you know, flown to inquire. And for somehow, you know, when you talk to other teams, it gets out to the media. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to listen on Nate, like we do all of our players that, other teams call on and if something makes sense or we think you know it's going to make our team better or you know we're going to look to do it so um, Nate's not unlike you know all of our other players but it just seems like you know for whatever reason it's got out there more on him than some of the other guys um, and, uh, you know we look at Arizona they've made another deal here where they're not giving up anything and they're just taking on a player with a, a contract make, maybe maybe needs a new start um, you know, is that something you guys have discussed with somebody, say, like Louis Erickson or, or any other players that perhaps are on contracts that are uncomfortable now? Yeah, we've talked to teams, you know, about that. And we're going to continue to talk to them, you know, through the day and tomorrow and leading into the draft. And we'll just see where it ends up going. Okay, we'll take our next question here from Ben Kuzma with Post Media. Uh, good morning, Jim. A couple from me regarding the draft. Uh, my first question is, uh, it's a rarity in any draft to have offensive defensemen because of, of a supply and demand kind of criteria. And it's, it's just a rarity. I'm just wondering with um, available defensemen in the top 10 who, who fit that bill, uh, how much to, is that going into your planning and what you're thinking of what you may or may not do tomorrow? Yeah, we're our, our philosophy, Ben, is to draft the best player available when we pick. So, um, you know, at the ninth pick, there's some defensemen we really like. They may be there at nine, uh, you know, and then there's some forwards we really like, too. So, you know, when we pick at the ninth pick, um, you know, we're, we're going to take the best player we think is available at nine. You said earlier that at nine and 41 in the first two days of the draft that you're pretty confident that you're going to get two good players, whether they be a center and defenseman, whatever combination, 
Uh, is that your thinking today as we get into tomorrow? Yeah, that you know, that second round pick, um, you know, we're kind of, you know, there's a bunch of guys we like and, and, you know, we're not necessarily looking positionally. We're going to, you know, I think there's going to be more forwards available with that second pick probably than defensemen. So if there's one of those guys we like, and we like some defensemen are, that are going to be available in the second round too. So uh, if one of those players are there, we're going to, you know, I think we're going to, same as in the first round, in the second round, we're going to try to take the best, the player we think is the best available player. Okay, moving along, we'll take our next question from Rob Williams, Daily Hive. Rob, go ahead. Hi, Jim. Uh, just wondering if you are uh, interested in re-signing Brandon Sutter? Yeah, I talked to Brandon uh, a couple of days ago and I talked to Travis Hamanick. Um, you know, we have a lot of moving parts these next few days, but we do have interest in, in, in signing both of them. So, you know, we're going to just see what this next couple of days looks like as far as, you know, what we can do. And, you know, we've, we've talked about internally about, you know, trying to bring those guys back. Also wondering what your goal is um, regarding your blue line heading into free agency. Uh, do you feel the need to kind of change the mix of uh, the types of players that you have on the back end? Yeah, I think we're going to try to be real active in free agency to, um, you know, kind of add some, some guys with some size and strength. You know, we've seen in the playoffs, the teams that, you know, had some bigger guys back there that, you know, play a physical brand of hockey, they had success. And so I think that's something in free agency that we're going to be looking at. We'll go next to Chris Faber, Canucks Army. Hey, Jim, wanted to uh, ask about Mikey DiPietro. I know that Ian Clark and some of his media availability said that a goal for Mikey should be to make the NHL next year out of camp. Um, is that something that you think is feasible for him or because of the lost games last year, do you think he needs some AHL games before he can get into the NHL? Yeah, well, he, you know, he didn't play a lot of games last year. So, you know, if if he comes into camp and he deserves to or earns a backup job, then he can be our backup goalie. But I think in a perfect world, you know, we'd like to see him, you know, be the goalie in Abbotsford and play, you know, 60 games, 65 games for our group down there next year and get, you know, lots of action. So he's available if we need him at any point during the season. And with the addition of Jason Dickinson, uh, that brings a nice defensive line now to what looks like to be your third line. If he's centering that. Uh, is that kind of a good landing spot for Vasily Pod Coles? And as he comes in with his strengths in the defensive zone? I think so. You know, in, in getting Jason Dickinson, he's a versatile player. Like he can, you know, he's played the wing before he's played center. Um, you know, he's, he's a real good penalty killer. Uh, he brings speed to the team. He's a good leader. Like he's every, you know, everybody we've talked to about his leadership skills, you know, they're really high. So we're excited that we are able to acquire him and, and he'll be part of our, not our top nine and gives Travis versatility to either play him at the wing or at center. Next up, we'll go to Ian McIntyre, Sportsnet. Good morning, Jim. Uh, mentioning the, uh, defense and wanting to add perhaps some size and strength. Seattle just drafted a bunch of guys, uh, too many for an NHL lineup. Have you had any follow-up conversations with Ron Francis? And is that a potential um, area where you could find some help? Well, Ron, you know, was real busy yesterday. Um, and I think he's assigned Jason Botterell, the assistant GM, to our team. So I did have a conversation with Jason yesterday. Um, you know, we're going to continue to talk to them and, you know, and we'll just see where it ends up. But, um, you know, through free agency or trades, we'd, we'd like to add to our blue line. And there's a, kind of an unprecedented string of pressure points here between expansion, the draft and free agency. Do you feel like you need to get most of your work done on the roster in the, these couple of weeks, or do you look at the time frame as being everything up until the start of next season? I think it's up till the start of next season, Ian. Um, you know, I think this is a, a busy time here this last, you know, couple of weeks and, 
the next week to 10 days, we're going to be really busy. And, you know, in a lot of years, that's where you can, you know, add players that, you know, are going to be part of your group moving forward and to start the season. So we're, we're looking at a lot of different options, whether it be through trades, through uh, free agency to improve our team. But we want to, you know, add some players and be a competitive team next year. Okay, we'll take our next question from Farhan Lalji, TSN. Hi, Jim. Uh, you mentioned that you're still in discussions with Brandon Sutter. With, with Dickinson's arrival, where do you see Sutter fitting in your bottom six? Well, you know, he's a veteran player. Um, you know, he, he's a good penalty killer. Um, you know, we'll just have to see. Like, he can, you know, he can play center. Uh, you know, with Jay Beagle coming back, he can play the wing. We'll see what happens here in, in you know, trades the next couple of days. But, you know, we just think that he's an important guy in the room. And, you know, he's a good fit with our group already and, and a good leader in our group. So we'll just see where it ends up. How much interest has there been in your ninth overall pick? Are you taking more calls than you're making on it? Yeah, there's there's been a lot of interest in the ninth pick. Um, you know, so we're we're listening. Um, if if we think something makes sense, and you know, if we can add a player that kind of fits into our age group, we'll take a look at it. And but I would say we're getting more calls on that ninth pick than we have in past years when we've had our picks. Next up, we'll go to Bick Nazar, Sportsnet 650. Hi, good morning, Jim. Thanks for doing this. Uh, when you were on Sportsnet 650 minutes ago, you mentioned you've given teams permission to talk to Jake Vertanen's agent. Uh, right. What is the context in which teams are allowed to speak to his agent? And is that in anticipation of like a buyout or interest in trade? Yeah, more of interest in trade. They just want to know, you know, where his situation is right now. And so, you know, we've given team's permission to to talk to his agent and and you know they need to feel comfortable with the situation so i don't know like where it's going to end up but i guess we'll see in the next two or three days transactionally is he in any sort of limbo or anything like that or are you allowed to trade no. or allowed to buy him out okay thank you yeah no he's he's not in any sort of limbo okay we have time for a couple more here we'll go to satyar shaw sportsnet 650 Good morning, Jim. Thanks for doing this. Uh, as far as you mentioned trades and you mentioned free agency and defenseman and free agency, would you say what, based on how this market is kind of built up for forwards that the best value might be trade to get forwards, whereas free agency, the value might be on defense? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Um, and, you know, even with all the defensemen Seattle took yesterday, you know, I think there's maybe an opportunity, you know, that they're going to be moving some of those guys on. So, We'll continue to have conversations with them. And, and you know, there's some defensemen that are free agents that we really like. and But we're going to work the trade market here the next few days and see where that goes too. And as far as the draft goes, there's a specific question about Brand Clark. Because you look at your blue line, you have Quinn Hughes, you have Tyler Myers. But if you look long term, I see a spot if he's available there at nine. What do you think of him and potential fit if he's the best player at number nine? Well, he, he is, he's got high-end hockey sense and, He's an extremely skilled player with the puck. So um, we think, you know, he's going to have the ability to grow into a real good NHL player at some point. So, um, you know, just because we have some other guys doesn't mean that, that we're not looking at him if he's there at nine. All right. Our last hand raised here this morning is Thomas Drance. Thomas, go ahead. Jim, early next week, your club will send out qualifying offers, I think, uh, the likes of Pedersen and Hughes are obvious. Um, does your plan, does your club plan uh, and have you made a decision on whether or not to qualify some of the depth players that played games for your club last year in Jace Howerlock and Mark Michaelis? I think, you know, those are, we've talked about it internally. You know, we're going to continue to talk about it. We'll see what this next two or three days brings us. And then we'll probably make those decisions on Sunday as the QOs have to be off on Monday. And a final one back to the draft. Uh, teams seem to be a little bit split in how they assess the 2021 class. Uh, some teams see it as an underscouted class. Some teams see opportunity. How does how is this draft class shaping up in your eyes? I I think we look at it as opportunity. I think you know there's enough good players that in the first two rounds that we think we're going to add two more real good players to our group, 
And then after that, we're going to have to rely on the area guys, you know, that's seen the players play this year. But I think we have a real good scouting group. They've worked hard this year and we're going to know the players. So I expect, you know, that we'll do a good job from the third round on.